three is beginning to trend on social media. To Australia, where they're facing those massive fires. The MVP Kobe Bryant died earlier this afternoon. The United Kingdom has now recorded Europe's highest number of deaths linked to coronavirus. So far today, it's been Sanjay the deadliest day in the United States so far. Untuk melaksanakan perintah kawalan pergerakan. We have always been important. 2020, what happened, man? You know, this year has by far been the most unusual and perhaps the most eventful year of probably this century. You know, from war rumours to bushfires to protests and, and, of course, the main event, COVID-19. And this pandemic has affected every person um, in one way or another. And this, this is my pandemic story. Hi, I'm Danny. I'm 19. I'm a student from Curtin University, Sarawak. So my pandemic story started on a Thursday afternoon in class. So I remember my lecturer walking in and telling us that he had just come back from an emergency meeting and the campus might shut down from anywhere from a few days to a few months. So the following Monday, true enough, the campus shut down and two days later, Malaysia went into a movement control order, MCO. And everything was shut down, flights were getting cancelled and people were told to stay home. Now, of course, within my family, the question came up whether I should go back home to Kuala Lumpur or I should stay in Miri. And I think at that point, we realised that it was either I go back now or I'm stuck in Sarawak for, you know, who knows how long. So on that Saturday, I woke up to eight missed calls from my mom. And I looked over to my friends and I told them, guys, I think I'm going home. And so I booked a flight, which was not cheap. And 24 hours later, I was packing minimal stuff and I was headed back home. You know, the night before I left, I, I remember being outside my house in Mary. And I was looking up like at the stars because there's a lot of stars in Mary. And I think I realized at that point that I have no idea when I'll be back. I have no idea when I'll see my friends again and I have no idea when, you know, everything will be normal again. And that freaked me out because so much has changed and, and so much has happened globally in a span of a week. You know, at that time, it truly really felt like we were in uncharted territory. So a morning came on March 22nd, 2020 and I left for the airport. And it was full on masks, gloves, the works, everything. And once I reached the airport, I think I realised how big of a deal this was. This was a Sunday morning. Usually a lot of flights go in and out at that hour, but not that day. I can only describe it best as it was like a scene from a movie. So I got my flight. I had the whole road to myself. I didn't dare touch anything on the plane. I didn't dare speak to anyone. I did cough once, which honestly felt like committing a crime. That was it. So once I landed in KL, I went out to the arrivals and my brother was there to pick me up. And he sprayed sanitizer all over me and my bags. And for some reason, he asked me to sit in the trunk to be far away from each other or something like that. I don't know. To this day, I think he was just messing with me. But at the time, I thought everything was so weird, so I just went along with it. So yeah. Anyway, when I finally got back home, I couldn't hug my parents or really talk to them because now, I had to go into quarantine for 14 days. So I got out of the car and I waved to my parents and I went straight to my quarantine room. And I felt like those NASA astronauts that just returned from space. And now began the 14 days of self-isolation. I had meals sent to my room, water replenished every few hours, and spent a lot of time playing games. I was on video call with my friends like every night. You know, we would play games, we would just watch movies, talk, hang out. And it was weird. I celebrate birthdays with my family on video chat while my family was literally just upstairs in the kitchen. And we did all sorts of things, but basically I just kept myself occupied. You know, I'll be honest, there were times where I felt like I couldn't take it anymore. But my friends and family being, well, virtually there, for most of the time, made it alright. So before I knew it, my 14 days were almost up and now I had to get tested for COVID-19. So on the 12th day of quarantine, I walked out of the room for the first time 
and I drove to the hospital for a drive through swab test. So I got to the hospital and I had the swab test done, which was quite uncomfortable and not cheap. Basically, I paid 600 bucks for someone wearing a stormtrooper looking suit to stick a swab down my throat and up my nose. Yeah, that's not something you can say every day. And 24 hours later, I got a call and thankfully my results were negative, which means that now I could just complete my 14 days and I could go back to normal. Well, not normal, but you know, out of quarantine. So finally, my 14 days of isolation were complete and meeting my family after being in the same house with them for two weeks but not being able to see them was weird to say the least. And so my journey from Miri back home was finally complete. What started off as a regular day in class turned into, it turned into something I would have never imagined happening. You know, a lot of times during this whole coronavirus thing, I found myself upset at the situation, I guess. I was upset, I was angry, I was frustrated, I was confused. All sorts of things at the same time. Basically, I thought my struggles were hard. You know, then I switch on the TV and I see what's going on out there. From the frontliners to the first responders, some are stuck in quarantine in abusive households, for some, boredom is the least of their worries. They worry about putting food on the table for their families. They worry about having a roof over their heads. And I guess seeing and reading those stories and just this whole time in general has made me appreciate the little things that I guess I took for granted before. Like going out like this and going to the park, you know? Yeah, this year has been crazy and I think more than anything, it has shown and proved that we as humans can come together and work together when it's needed. Whether it's fighting forest fires, or mourning death, or standing up for what is right. And of course, battling war with an invisible enemy.